All right, so here's the current dilemma. So we have a category four hurricane that's seemingly tracking directly over North Carolina and the center almost over Raleigh-Durham area. So um, we're gonna have plenty of time probably to do some inside projects over the next few days or at least some garage projects because I gotta imagine it's probably gonna wreak havoc on the trails no matter what. So they're gonna probably all be shut down and there's probably gonna be a big cleanup afterwards. So. Here we are. So I did uh, receive our 9.8 rebuild kit. So today I'm going to actually go through and uh, try to rebuild this dropper post and see if it will keep air. So let's get started. All right, so this is our rebuild kit. So we'll just kind of go through the package here. So definitely got some instructions. And this is the brake removal tool. Guys, I gotta be honest with you. I mean, it's great that this was warranty and free, but if uh, I wouldn't buy this if uh, if you're just wanting to do maintenance it's pretty much just some threaded rod <clears throat> a washer and a nut so if you want to make one of these there you go and then we have a bunch of seals we have some grease don't lose all the wash the, the small seals as well and then inside this little plastic piece we have the new improved um, seal support ring it looks like it's made out of some aluminum and it's got these uh, slots cut at a very uh almost as a as a z in the side so um so i think the foam ring sits down inside of that and that's what seals off the chamber so i'm gonna be following this video so this is the video that 9.8 sent me and i'm just gonna follow that so so the first thing it says do is remove the head so we have these two uh hex bolts here that we've got to remove and then we'll clean the head There. This is uh, isopropyl alcohol in my sprayer here, and I'll just give this a spray and a good wipe down. All right. So what we do now is we insert our cassette bolt in, and then we insert our threaded rod until it bot and screw it in until it uh, bottoms out, basically. And then we just want to tighten our nut down. Do it by hand tightening first and then we'll take our wrench and we'll tighten it down until it stops we've got our 11 millimeter wrench and mind you when i'm working with anything that has air in it even if it doesn't have a lot like i know this does you know try not to point stuff at your eyes that's always a good idea or even at your body all right so we got that good and snug all right so now we're going to put our post into our uh our park tool stand and we will release the rest of the air out of the top shaft here and collapse the post down and we're gonna let the air out and push down at the same time all right I'm gonna I don't have a deep socket this side so I'm just gonna use my adjustable wrench here try not to uh, mess our knuckles up It comes out pretty easy. It's not uh, super tight. It's, um, I think you, it's pretty much hand tight pressure. So we're gonna screw this all the way out. Now we're gonna remove the, uh, let's pull this up a little bit. And we're gonna remove the brake release tool. There we go. All right, so what we have to do now is we actually have to remove this bottom nut piece here and it screws off. Uh, but you have to grab the shaft here with a power, uh, pair of pliers. And so I'm gonna cut a piece of the inner tube and um, apply some pressure with the, the, the pliers and then remove this with our uh, cassette ring, ring tool. And this is the recommended way they say do it on the video as well. All right, so I have a little square, uh, square of inner tube and some pliers. 
I'm just gonna wrap that around. If I can finish it with hand. So that is our uh, bottom nut removed. It's just a threaded shaft there. All right, so. Um, they recommended you put the uh, post in a um, bike stand and then twist the nut off. I had to do it opposite. So what I did is I put the, the case in and I used a strap tool here to put around the, the nut. And then I removed the nut versus spinning the bottom. So there's always multiple ways to do things. But this uh, my, my stand at the top, you have to get it around this only this piece here. And my stand is, uh, I guess it's too flexible at the top and it wouldn't clamp. So I put the strap wrench on it and this uh, collar nut sp uh, spins right off. So accomplished the same thing, just a little bit different way. Um, so we'll finish spinning this off and we'll remove the lower here and uh, continue. All right, so now I'm gonna remove the post from the, and we'll take it over to our bench because as I slide this piece out, I'm going to go over to the bench. There's some keys that will fall out as you pull things out. All right, let's pull this uh, shaft out. And there we go. So it'll washer. And these are the keys and springs that will fall out. They're embedded in the side here. So now what we have to do is there's a uh, this bushing here. So we get a slotted screwdriver and pry that out and remove it. Top there as such. Put that in there. All right, so we just removed our dust wiper with a, with a um, pair of pliers. So now it says we need to clean everything with some alcohol alcohol so we'll clean the collar here they also want us to clean the bottom nut with some alcohol this is a fairly new dropper so I'm not gonna um, doesn't give me confidence that this had the new collar and it failed too, so I don't know what's going on there. Don't do that. And I'm gonna clean out these key indentions. So we're gonna start greasing the, uh, the wiper seal in the inside here. And be very liberal with the grease, according to the instructions. Make sure we get grease down in the slot there. there we go. Now it says grease the red O-ring as well. There's no scientific way to do this. It shows them doing it with their fingers. So now it says install the red O-ring, the wiper. Install our wiper and make sure it fits inside the grooves here so our red wiper is greased on one side this is the top side and so you just push it in there and make sure it fits in the groove and it's seated then it says apply some grease to the upper and lower inside of the wiper and then apply grease to the x-ring seat which will be this inner lip here all right now we're gonna install our collar over our tube just kind of work it down remember it's going to be a little bit tight because there is a dust seal there we'll slide it down all right so now we're going to take our grease down. x ring seal and we're going to work it into in between the the nut and the uh,
shaft here. And then I'm gonna take this um, plastic fork end and just kind of seat it down in there. Easy. All right, so we've got our X-ring seal worked in using the plastic end of the fork. And I verified it with a light. It's not twisted up, so we should be good there. All right, so now we're gonna install our new SSR ring. Slide it down. All right, so next we need to apply grease liberally, it says. So let's really fill that void. Then it says, install the foam ring with the rough side to the top of the post. This is the top of the post. Um, let me fill the... So it definitely has a smooth side and a rough side. So the rough side goes toward the top of the post. So I'm gonna slide that down and seat that in. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna reinstall our bushing here. Um, so we're gonna clean that first, some alcohol. And it says if you spread it too much when you were taking it off, you can uh, kind of squeeze it back together. Clean it up, clamp it back together, minimum gap there. All right, let's install our bushing. Now it wants us to grease all of the key pockets here and grease the bushing as well. All right guys, let's get back to rebuilding this 9.8 dropper post. So I had to take, I uh, was working on it the other night and uh, uh, it was just getting late in the night and we had a Hurricane Fran which was in, kind of encroaching on the coast there. So I had to go make some hurricane preparations and I just didn't get time to finish up the post. So let's finish up the post. <coughs> All right, so this is probably the, uh, the most frustrating part of this build. And the key is really to use these rubber bands to wrap around the keys very tight. Let's see the, the key keys here, the key cutouts. There's three of them that match the top tube. So what we wanna do is align those when we're inserting the tube into here. <clears throat> All right, we're back. Okay, so one thing, I had to stop and um, find my other V2 collar nut and, uh, and a foam ring because I messed the first one up and I had already had a, an additional rebuild kit. So I think it matters a lot which rubber bands you use um, in order to hold the uh, keys into place on the shaft. And so I sourced some different rubber bands and hopefully they're, they're tighter and will work better. And to counteract or mitigate the risk of damaging my new uh, collar and uh, foam ring or new, uh, new uh, seal support ring and foam ring, I just cut a slit into the old uh, um, wiper and X ring. And I'm just gonna put these two around the shaft like that. Um, and then hopefully as I apply pressure to just get it started, um, there's enough wiggle room in there and I'll just take these off as I slide it down. But uh, that's the plan. I don't know if it'll work or not, but we'll see. This is by far the worst part of the rebuild that I've encountered so far. So getting these um, uh, keys seated in with grease and then also trying to, uh, trying to hold all of that while you have grease on it with a rubber band get it lined up into the keyholes and kind of ease it in uh, without damaging anything that has been the uh the crux i'm probably going to remove this one and just use the x ring seal there because it's a little bit thinner um, so we're going to try it i've got some new springs new keys um, what i found is is that the springs are just a little bit longer obviously the springs are there for uh as um you know the the wear changes over time the springs are there to kind of help um, mitigate and push uh, these keys into the right place the problem is well not the problem but the challenge is there's a gap in there obviously and you need the rubber band to kind of hold these otherwise they start to bend uh, where that gap is the spring bends and you end up let's see if I can find one you end up with something that looks like this when you start to put it down into the tube so the spring is all messed up there you can see it's bent to one side 
Um, so I want to try to keep that from happening. So first we want to grease these indentions here and uh, place our keys in. Uh, I'm going to try to slip the rubber band over after I get the keys in. Sometimes that's been a problem and I just slide it down and then slide it back up. We shall see. Now here's the hard part, is getting the rubber band over it without everything moving. I'm going to try to pre-slide these. It's just really super tight. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it on or not. And of course not. So I've got the rubber band around there twice, and it looks twice. Uh, it looks like it's it's kind of seated. Um, I'm gonna try to use this ring, and I'm just gonna put it around the shaft here. And instead of using this to hold it, I'm gonna try to use this as I kind of work the uh, the shaft into the uh, tube or to the bottom, the upper into the bottom. It's important to cover the um, where the spring is bare there with, with a lot of the rubber band because it'll bulge. Um, so all we need to do is try to get it started and work it in there easy. So we'll try to do that now. All right, this is the tricky part. Getting the rubber band off. close up of what it looks like. So right now you can see those little gold keys. They're seated down in there just enough not to pop out and you have just enough room to get the rubber band out. Let's see if I can get some light on it. Those keys are sitting in there and that is what keeps the Remember the side to side or the uh, twist and play I showed you in the uh, in the Fox post? Well, these little keys keep this inner shaft from twisting in the outer shaft, and that's the design that that keeps it from uh, twisting. Now it's a pain in the butt to get in there. I've tried this like 18 times already, and I finally I think I've got it. I just need to get the rubber band off without messing it all up. So I just clip that rubber band off with some scissors. So now I'm going to slide the uh, collar down and thread it in. I'm just going to throw a little bit of grease around there. I think I've rubbed some of the grease off of my fingers around that seal rubber o band and if you're feeling any tension at this point don't continue going because what happens is actually those keys will come dislodge and you'll bend all the springs up and it's just not a good thing so don't ask me how I know that so when it's fully seated you won't be able to see the uh, 
that gap there it would only be just a fingernail gap and right now I can see my uh, I can see still see the o-ring so we've got to I'm gonna try to get my strap wrench around here first I'm gonna wipe the grease off so, so everything um, locks down pretty tight and uh, my strap wrench and actually tighten it up all right I've got my uh, strap wrench here I'm just gonna try to tighten it the nut and make sure I'm not overlapping on the bottom Let's just give it a good twist. I think that's it. All right. So we have the upper and the lower with our new um, foam ring, a new seal support ring, new seals. Um, so now we've got to work on the bottom. All right, so we're going to flip this upside down so we can work on the bottom. And my shaft. Need to push my post down so my shaft comes out there. And we have already put our O-ring in the last, uh, in the earlier part of the video, there's an O-ring inside here. Um, there's an O-ring on the outside, this black one, and there's also this bump stop. Um, washer here all right so it says ply a little bit of grease around the bottom shaft here on the threads it also um, says apply some Loctite if you have it I do have Loctite but um, I'm not going to actually uh, put any Loctite on this for right now all right and so now we'll just thread this on All right, so we take our uh, cassette ring tool, which allows us to tighten this down. And then we're just going to grab the shaft with some pliers and uh, over some inner tube there. And we'll tighten this down. It says three to four Newton meters. All right, we got that tightened down. We're going to put our cassette ring tool back on. And then we're going to use our brake tool to release the brake. We want to apply some grease to the o-ring here on the bottom. And, and it says hand tighten. Now we remove our brake release tool. And after that, we will repressurize the seat post with our shock pump. All right, so the standard is uh, 20 min, 40 max, 30 is normally where they uh, come in at. So, so we're going to go up to 30. So we're at 23, 22. About 30 and a half. Do that. We'll remove Put our Schrader valve cap back on, and that is the rebuild. So I'm going to go put it into the bicycle, and uh, first we'll put the head back on. And we'll put the seat back on, and uh, we'll put it in the bike and see what happens. So I've got the uh, the head, which holds the seat, and uh, just a tiny bit of grease on the threads and I'm just going to install these. Alright, I'm just going to fit things loosely up here right now. Alright, so there's our seat post. We'll go get our bike and we'll put this in the bike and hopefully it will pop up and down. Alright, we have our seat post, we have our bike. This is my 5010, which by the way is for sale. Um, you can go on Craigslist. It's not listed on Pink Bike. Um, I'm gonna put this on. See what happens. So I already have the connector kit hooked up here. I'm just gonna screw it in. Get a little bit more slack here. There we go. Let me 
should see the seat pop up actually. Adjust the cable a little bit for the slack but now we have a working seat post just uh, a couple tidbits of information that probably will help you guys if you're trying to uh, do this rebuild yourself all right so first the um, so first off the the, uh, the actual rubber bands uh, matter in this case um, I tried some very uh, cheap rubber bands that I got from the grocery store. They just didn't have enough tension on them and they weren't wide enough. So I ended up um, purchasing these rubber bands from Amazon. Um, you can get them. They're called Tulip Rubber Bands. Um, they're pretty good. And this is what they look like on Amazon. So they, they work really well. The other thing I mentioned too is, is be careful not to um, drive the foam seal that sits inside the SSR ring um, too far into the upper part of the keys because it will make some indentations in that uh, foam seal and uh, that's not going to be good um, to keep the air uh, sealed in. So be careful. Use your fingers on top of the rubber band to kind of help push the post and the keys and the rubber band down all at the same time and then I'd recommend sliding the rubber band up and then snipping the rubber band off because any kind of um, wiggle or anything you do to the seat post could potentially cause one of those keys to kind of pop out and that key process everything else is super easy here um, if you have a strap wrench um, which I find was was easier than trying to, to muck around with a vise or even the um, park tool stand It wasn't tight enough to actually remove the collar. So uh, get a strap wrench remove the, the nut the, the collar nut and um, Get some good rubber bands and make obviously make sure you have the rebuild kit and pay attention to when it says use grease liberally or a thin coat of grease because that can matter in a lot of these um, steps you don't want to put too much grease in because things won't seat properly um, so yeah so those are um, uh, the steps that I followed to rebuild this post we'll see how it um, it works out over the next few days and uh, I would say um, you know all in all it, it was a fairly easy rebuild except for getting those keys seated and getting the upper tube into the lower tube. That was a pure pain in the butt. All right, guys, that'll do it for this video. You know what to do. Click that bell for post notifications so you'll get new uploads. You'll get notified of that, at least you think you will. Sometimes you won't, sometimes you will. YouTube's kind of kind of funny about that. Um, click either the thumb up or thumb down. If you like the video, thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, thumbs down. Comment below if you find a better way to do this or if you find a better dropper post. Um, I'd love to hear from you. Share the video with your friends. Click the subscribe button if you haven't already. You guys know what to do. Until next time, skill up and ride.